Review Committee on Genetic Manipulation, Ministry of Science and Technology, Chairman RCGM Expert Committee, GM Rice, Biosafety, and with Professor Pritam Singh, Professor of Eminence, the only management teacher who is known to us who has been awarded the Padma Award. May I now request the Acharya. <laughs> Professor Pritam Singh does not need an introduction, at least to all of us in the management fraternity. He has been a mentor, an institutional builder, a great role model, and continues to motivate many, many young teachers like us. Sir, your contribution to the field of management education has been immense. Thank you for accepting our invitation. I have equal pleasure to invite Professor Bandopadhyay, currently Director IFMR who has been with IIM Lucknow for nearly two decades. He given a lot of contribution to the field of management education, currently heading one of the prestigious institutes in Bhopal. Sir, may I request you to kindly take care of this. I now invite Professor R.K. Mishra ji, my teacher, mentor, friend, philosopher, guru, guide, critic, and what not. The reason is he has guided us in many initiatives and this is one of the most uh, important initiatives which he has guided us. May I request Professor Mishra Ji to take this. Mr. Professor Mishra doesn't need an introduction. He has been he has contributed a lot to the cause of management education. I now request Professor Ravi Kumar, Professor I am Bangalore, who again doesn't require an introduction, at least in this part of the state. Uh, please come, Professor Ravi Kumar. And Professor Ravi Kumar is a tenured professor in IIM Bangalore, an institute that enjoys a top rank over the years, both locally and globally, and a reputed non clinical, clinical corporate counselor. <coughs> Dr. Ravi Kumar has 27 years of teaching, training, consultancy, and research experience in the fields of organization behavior, etc. He is also a recipient of fellowships from many organizations, including EFMD, MDSA, etc. His innovative teaching methods, Table, the head of the department of the leading school in Hyderabad, Usmania University, a very old institution, a reputed institution, which has nearly 150 colleges under it. Professor Sharma is also a acclaimed teacher, researcher, a very fine academic who has uh, both traveled widely abroad, published internationally, and now currently heading this. For the benefit of uh, the distinguished chief guest, I would like to brief the theme of the round table in two minutes and we will have the uh, presentation and we will have the session later on. Sir, um, for the last two, three years we have been both with the being in the university and both being associated with many schools and also during our interactions, we felt that one area which has to be built up is area of building up leadership in managing business schools, especially with the growth of number of schools uh, around the country. With the guidance of AICT and other important bodies, apex agencies, we have been able to do it. But we thought, as institutions who are responsible to um, provide the management education, we should get the leading schools together, the deans and directors, and hear from the people who are actually moving the, the field of management education, like Dr. Swami, Partha Sarthigaru, and other uh, dignitaries on the dais, and other people in the AICT. We had a request to um, Professor uh, Dr. Swami in Pantasarathi and uh, Prof. Pritam Singh and other dignitaries and they immediately agreed to participate in this one day round table. We are really glad that they have taken so much pains to come to Hyderabad in spite of being a holiday. Professor R.A. Yadav, who was also supposed to be here, Vice Chairman AICT, sends his greetings and good wishes and uh, also would like to have your important feedback after this round table. And I would like to request all the members of the Board of Management Studies of all AICT. And it's an important red letter day for us because the entire board, excepting one or two people, is there here. In fact, I am very personally proud because the city of Hyderabad is having this galaxy of personalities from New Delhi who are able to give us. I would like to uh, stop here and I request Professor A.R. Reddy to preside over the function.
game has another alertness this morning. So that's how it is. Honorable uh, Dr. Professor Pritam Singh, the seer of management education of India, Dr. Reddy, honorable dignitaries in the dais, and the August luminaries present here from the, the different B schools of Andhra Pradesh. The today's topic is challenges of managing B school issues and perspectives. While challenge, the, the challenges are different, uh, multi-dimensional challenges, the, but major challenges are with the pupil first. I will take it out of the pupil first because the challenges of managing B schools I believe all the challenges out are, are the are the outcome of the one challenges that is not having the quality people in the academy and not having the quality people in the academy are giving rise to the other challenges the key challenge is the people the key the key challenges are the pupil and uh, and that <coughs> absence of quality pupil in the academy are the, are the challenge that challenge giving rise to the other challenges right from the curriculum to the governance other difficult, other different technicalities because the academy, those, the people are being produced by the academy, can, academy are not able to retain them in the academy. This is another dimension. The, we are producing, though we are producing quality, uh, the quality people from our academy, very quality people from the academy, but that quality people are not attaining in, are not being, are not being coming back to the academy to input in the academy. Because the human resource, the quality human resource, which are, which are the asset to the academy, which can, which can meet the challenges in the academy, they, they are not with the academy. Because the scenario and the overall phenomena in this country is like that. The cream of the cream from academy are going to sell great cars. Cream of the cream from academy are going to sell washing powder, toothpaste and all this because these are considered more respectable than the academy the more respectable and that is the main challenges and if these challenges are being sorted out I believe the other challenges all be also will be taken care of and main the person who is supposed to supposed to design the curriculum I saw with news around the a year before in, in Hindustan times the Delhi University had not revised its curriculum since two decades. Not, not Delhi University. This, this scenario, Delhi University, why Delhi University? Because Delhi University is one of the premier and the pioneer university in the country, situated in the heart and the capital of the state, of the state India. But that university has not revised its curriculum since 20 years, two decades means if, if, if this is with a, the leading university then what about the other universities the other university in the case of the several universities this case is the same or more worse so in that scenario folks i asked the question who will design the curriculum 
who will design the curriculums. The person who is designing the instructor the curriculum, they are not in they are they are not in the academy. The person who is supposed to design the curriculum, they are selling credit card. The human acumen which is which has to be utilized for the knowledge building, knowledge creation, the human acumen, that acumen has been boiled down to use other the purpose which which purpose doesn't require that quality acumen. It's very funny in this country. Very funny in this country because these professions are more considered all attractive and lucrative in terms of the in terms of economy, in terms of facilities, in terms of availability of job, very easy and sustainability is easy and uh, and the uh, and the performance is also easy and but the, in terms of economy also is attractive and lucrative. This is the major challenges. 60 years of Indian independence. We have to look into the major problem with the country, not the challenge managing uh, the, the, the challenges managing B schools. Challenges managing B schools are a are not the disease and not the cause, it is the effect. It's the effect. There's a theory called cause and effect theory. One thinks something is cause, then it comes out as effect, then effect becoming cause, and then it's coming out another effect. Effect. Cause, effect, cause, effect, cause. So this is an effect. This effect, how which has come. Just have a look. 60 years of Indian independence, we are unable to provide 5% student higher education. 60 years of Indian independence, 96% drop out in this country. 96% drop out. Our Honorable President says the vision India 2020 and what India will be in 2020. Vision India 2020, I, I told him, vision India, my vision India 2020, if the India scenario, how far we will be able to change from 2007 to 2020, 13 years, we are away from 20. How in this 13 years, what the medical change we can expect? Answer is, we cannot expect any medical change. We can expect, that's what I told him, the vision India 2020, my vision is, by 2020, we will be requiring another, another five to six thousand prisons in this country. Vision India 2020, five to six thousand prisons, fifteen to sixteen thousand more additional judges, right from the Supreme Court to and, and Supreme Court to lower court, and another two million police personnel additional. Why? Why it is so? I told I told another president this is this will be the going to the India's future. Because the, the, the country which is having 96% dropout, the country which is having 96% dropout in the undergraduate level, the how much amount of students are loitering, the, the dropouts are loitering in this country, who who takes their account? There are 16 crore, 16 crore young boys, right from the age to 16 to 24, 16 to 24 are loitering in this country, 16 crore, note it down, having no agenda in their life. 16 crore means the 12% of total population. 12% of total population are loitering in this country having no agenda in their life. Okay, these are the causes. And these one after another, one after another, well, the sum total of the cause, 
will affect any academy, right? If engineering, that to from engineering to pharmacy to to technology to science to management everywhere. Sixteen crore young young boys, young between sixteen to twenty-four are loitering in this country, having no isn't that who cares them? Who bothers them? And this is coming out, emerging out, a huge crime force in this country. It's a crime force in this country because 96% dropout. And this country who is having 96% dropout, how can we talk about managing so in schools managing institutions without having a challenge, that challenge is cannot be sorted out from the air. We have to come down to the ground, we have to look into the ground what is going on because this the country which has invented, the country which has discovered the faculty of education the faculty of learning the country this country is having highest number of illiterate people in the country the country which has invented the faculty of learning faculty of education this country is having highest number of illiterate people what an irony in this country and 60 years of independence still the scenario has not been changed only the scenario has been covered with a beautiful towel and that is the scenario of the India. I am quoting one, one report. 2004, I had been to London to attend the Commonwealth Education Summit. I got a chance to visit, I got a chance to visit the British Archives, the one of the just one of the richest archive in the globe and I, got, I saw a 721 page report and that I requested the report, they told the report is not a public document I cannot give you. Then I, I processed my request to the Indian High Commission to the British Archive Authority, they, they handed over to me on some, on some condition that if I publish the document I will be prosecuted under the, under the International Court of Justice. That report, 1830th, what it is, 1833, British Royal Head asked the British Parliament, I would like to know what is the reason behind the non convenient of British dominion in India. 100 years since 1757 to 1833, almost 100 years they had passed. We have passed the toll before the British Parliament, we are why we are unable to dominate India, why, why we are not at ease in India in, 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 in terms of ruling, in terms of controlling the country, in terms of domination. The British Parliament and British Cabinet had no answer. Then after a few days of prolonged discussion, British Cabinet constituted a committee under the chairmanship of Lord Macleod. Lord McLeod sir, says the person who is having a major impact in this country that is Lord McAloy and Swami Vivekananda, our Professor and Professor Pritam Singh says. What the impact? Just let me brief. That, that committee came to this country, they traveled the whole country from 1832 to 1835. 1835, the committee went back to England and, and submitted the report before the British Parliament. What was the report? Just I quote from the report, 1835, 21st February, this is the report. The report was that I have traveled India and cities, but I have not seen a single man, I have not seen a single individual which is a beggar, a thief. I have not a single individual which is possessing the immoral character and, and they, I have not seen a single man, in, single citizen there which is possessing unethical and man of demonstration. That was the first line and then 
like his is giving the report. I don't think we will be ever able to conquer this country. We can rule this country virtually. Now, now he says, I don't think I will be available to conquer this country. We can rule this country virtually. Unless, if we break away its very backbone, which it is a spiritual and cultural heritage. That's what I propose. I propose to initiate the British education system in India by demolishing its traditional education system, by to, to, to demolish its culture. And this British, by the British education system, India will come to know what is British and foreigner is good. They will lose their self-esteem. They will, they will lose their self-esteem. The, and they will lose their, the confidence. What is, they will be started thinking what is British and foreigner is good. What is their not even indigenous is bad. They will completely lose their self-esteem. They will be truly dominant nation what we want. And he proposed, initiated, and today what is India? It is the result and outcome of that report. What is the result and outcome of that report? 60 years of Indian independence, we are unable to provide 5% students in higher education. Second, in the class 2 level also, we are unable to provide 50% students, 69% dropout in class 2 level. I call it, in the medieval age, there is a theory, feudalism. What is the objective of feudalism? Create the inequality, harvest the privilege. Create the inequality, harvest the privilege. British derive that theory in the form of the divide and rule, harvest the privilege. And the modern India is, has taken sophisticated tyrannism, is called create the ed education, deprive the, the citizen from the education, create the inequality and harvest the privilege. This is modern Indian tyrannism. It's going on the same thing, the old wine in, new, in the new bottle. And 60 years of Indian, we are busy with, with the name of caste, color, religion. Nobody would have ever thought about the education war scenario, the education scenario is going on and towards which direction. The quality people are not coming back to this academy. The cream of the cream of this country is going away from the country. We are not ready to create the opportunity and privileges in the country so that we can retain our cream people in this country. And the managing free schools and all sorts of difficulties, challenges in running these schools are the outcome of this story I bring to you. And this, this country's major problem, major disease is lying with the education. Not only the management education, challenging management education, mean is the challenges in the management education is the result and the outcome of your the government system talk about the schools government system talk about the any education private institutions the, the government system the government has has made an act that is called that act by dint of act one who wants to run education he has to create a society or the trust Society and trust can run the education because education is a charity. In this country still we consider education as a charity, not the right. Education still in this country is a charity, not the right. So that's what one trust or society has to be created and then you initiate the education. That's what no good people no corporate people are coming to this country to start or initiate the peace schools or any other engineering college or any other schools. With the one stroke of a pen, if we, with the 
one stroke of a pen, if we change this act, let the start, this, this institution, let the start come up in the form of the company, in the form of a company, and let it be a competition, and, and eradicate all sorts of these, the created impediments by the government, I call it by the government, by the political parties, and intentionally, so that they can create some inequality in the society. The government, who is there to look after the governance system? Let it come as a company, let it run as a form of a education service. Education service. The company law board to say we will look after the entire governance system. Let it come in the, in, in the secondary market, in stock market, come as, as, a, as a competition. All sorts of the, the problem with the governance system will be vanished at once. And in the place we will be able to get very good and class people and the, the corporates will be joining. Why Tata is opening is not opening in these schools? Why Tata is handing, they created an Indian Institute of Science, why they handed over to the, the hand over to government? Why Tata established the, the TIFR, why they handed over to government? Because those, they know the all sorts of, all sorts of problems in this place. I have told the all, the institutions, those who are being run by the charitable mode, by the so-called charitable mode, are the mechanism to contribute the black economy in the country. Government are losing the revenue. Government are losing the revenue. The total system is get, has, has, has been jumped. And it is coming, and they, we are contributing a huge amount of black revenue. This is the major problem in running the private institutions, the B schools, and managing B schools. If you if you look at these are the major symptoms, the diseases, and what the challenges we get. These are the effects. Curriculum, as I told you, their in their university has not revised curriculum since 20 years. What curriculum MBA and PGTBM is there? God knows what curriculum. There is no the there is no connection. What the the 21st, 20th century curriculum? We are with in the academy in the 20, 20, 21st century with the 19th century curriculum. Can it be possible that the 19th century curriculum? can create the 21st century, the 21st century talent. To create the 21st century talent, we require 21st century curriculum. And who will design the 21st century curriculum? We require that the person who is having the, the mind, the mindset, and the, with the super quality, academic acumen, we are losing them. They are going away from the Problem with the teaching methods. Problem with the teaching methods. The B school teacher doesn't know how to teach. We, are, we have established accreditation, national board of accreditation. I told the, the accreditation authority requires accreditation first. An accreditation authority requires accreditation first, then they should go for accreditation others. Accreditation, accredited all up after the accreditation I have seen, the number of institution has no basic infrastructure and quality, they got the accreditation. The profound question for these and all is lying with the quality. We are talking about the, the quality governance, that's corporate governance, and in peace schools also, it must come, the quality governance, the quality, the total quality management, 
and total quality management cannot be without the total quality man. First we have to have a total quality man, then we can go for the total quality, the management and quality governance. And overall the scenario which is there in the country is cannot be solved, sorted out by one or two seminars. The seminar can create the consensus among the people and people has to, I call it, that's what I want the strong revolution in the country. I want the strong revolution in the country to change the country's face to the education. And the managing B schools, even the, our regulatory authority, what the norms and standard is being practiced since, since two decades they have, the, it needs to be revised. It's, it's, it has to come to the, to the need of the hour. It has to come to the need of the hour, to address to the need of the hour, not what it was designed and structured the 20 years before. And why we and institutions, because the inst those institutions are there, they are to they are coming out in the mode of charity. The, 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 the front mode, the mask is charity. Mask is charity, the charitable mask. Behind the charitable mask, and having the charitable mask, we cannot run a quality education. We cannot create quality education. So I, would, I feel that I should, this, I should place before you this indigenous an indigenous and congenial problem about the education and that I, I hope this congenial education, this problem, the congenial diseases which are the, which has brought this country's situation and which has created a cancer in the country. It's a cancer, social cancer. And this social cancer has to be sourced has to be sorted out, not by any more. We need a strong revolution. I thank you, Dr. Venkatraman and all these people, those who organize these things to address the issues. But I, my request is that don't see these topics from the air, come down to the ground level and work on that and make the people aware and make the people raise the voice against the sophisticated tribalism. Thank you. Um, what I, what you heard now is the uh, provocative uh, parts uh, uh, taking on the larger issues that affect directly or indirectly managing the E school, uh, man managing the P schools, also those problems that afflict the nation today in the education system, in particular in the general society in general. Now, I am sure you got the message that the issue is quite broad, quite a broad one, and one has to look not only from the above but also at the ground level what to be done in such. Uh, such a scenario where we are far away from our target to the extent of uh, not even anywhere close to the expectations of 2020. That is in gist of uh, what uh, he gave us and provided a, a platform on which the rest of the deliberations can go on and it's actually a sort of direction. With this now, I think I'll exercise my option of speaking in front of you. Dignitaries on the dais and, and luminaries in the field of management, schools, education. After hearing Swami Garbo, I don't know whether there is really much more to speak on general issues. I am actually an odd man out here. I am a scientist, a biotechnologist, geneticist. 
dealing with uh, more contagious issues on behalf of the government of India on the GMOs, so-called uh, genetically modified organisms. In any case, he raised an issue on which I want to dwell. It was brought up very clearly that this education system in this country is really suffering. The way I look at it, since ancient times, millennia, Indian education system, so maybe the other uh, developed countries today, really was looked upon by civil societies at that time with a lot of respect for inspiration when the civil societies were in trouble. This kind of respect on ancient institutions and educational systems gradually eroded. Today, the society almost lost faith in the education system in the universities. There are many reasons. And to build such, again, back such a system requires very drastic measures, really drastic measures. How many states in this country and how many educationists in this country are taking such steps? There are committees and committees and committees, resolutions and resolutions and resolutions, advisory committees of all kinds, but education remains where it is, literally. One of the fundamental facts that education system is suffering today, one of the major diseases, is the lack of autonomy, erosion of autonomy, total erosion of autonomy in the state universities, and a little bit still left over in the central universities. But those central universities, such as Delhi, it's amazing, 20 years they don't touch the revision of the syllabus. What do we expect from society now? Do we expect respect or disrespect or ignorance? Irrelevance. This is what's happened. Secondly, universities have been run on the mode of administration. It is tested and outdated administration. Now here, everything is looked upon how the university is being administered. So the government is bothered about administration, not management of the university. That must be understood. So government is administering the vice chancellor, and the vice chancellor is administering the registrar, and he is administering the university. It's a total jamindari system. Absolute jamindari system. There's no way uh, different than that. However, there are some leeways, so one has to look into those to get away with it. But when something goes wrong, they will say, university is not managed. Well, there was no management. University was not supposed to manage, it's supposed to administer. All they are looking is, what are the receipts from the government, what are the expenditure, whether utilization certificate is there or not, how many strikes in a year, what is the attendance, examinations are conducted, results are given or not, that's all it is. Nobody is bothered about the academic auditing, there is a financial auditing, there is no academic auditing. So the question here, the basic question here is, we have learned to administer universities, although in a bad way. We have not yet learned to manage universities. That fundamental change must come in the way the, in the, way the universities are run. Unless that, unless that change comes into the, uh, into the system, how a university which is administered can manage these schools it will also administer the B-School, same way. You invite a top class CEO, will pay only 150 rupees, second class AC. If you come, you come, otherwise you, it's a dean who will, who will have to do something else in order to get it. So this kind of uh, 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 normalization, uh, I call abnormalization, not normalization on everything else. Same, same problem everywhere, same rules for all. This is creating trouble. If you want, if when, once the universities start innovating measures, trying to develop some schools on the basis of their need or their relevance to the society or their relevance to the globalized society, where if you want universities to train people, train managers tomorrow to work in a competitive spirit, in a, in a, in a competitive atmosphere, not just doing business but competitive business fight globally for our right start, right position, right level of stature, how can we go on doing the same thing? Therefore, the, this change has to be brought in as soon as we can. 
Same thing is happening in the business and same thing is happening in the technology. What could have been done with 1,000 crores is taking 5,000 crores because the system loopholes. And the, there are also the same problem. Same, the man who designs the missile will also have to follow the same rules of 150 rupees and second class AC, <laughs> wherever he goes, whatever he does. And is administered in the same way, he's not given leeway to do this, to do that. If he's in the university system, he'll have to follow this. This kind of monotony should be broken. And in the uh, inst in, instead of that way, I now see, including our state and in other states where I go as an expert, there is more control of the government, more and more control of the government. And we are looking at the system as whether the university creates jobs or not, which schools are creating jobs. Okay, go for biotechnology, there are jobs. Go for pharmaceutical chemistry, job. Go for MBA, jobs. MCA, job. After a while, universities will be producing people who are running around with a, a screwdriver on the backpack and going around. Who the hell will create true knowledge? And what is there to disseminate if there is no creation of pure knowledge in the universities? Even in MBA, somebody has to create pure knowledge. That's what, this, uh, uh, that's what the gist of the talk. Just now you heard. The universities are not meant to just make such semi-robotic people. No, university is, 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 is their main, main agenda is to create pure knowledge of excellence. That's the only place where pure knowledge can be created, nowhere else. Higher education, not private institution. They are, they are busy with the, preparing the quality graduates, quality, quality in the sense, reputation with institution. Instead of selling uh, credit cards, maybe they will be selling airplanes. But they are also only human skill is not the pure knowledge. So who will create the pure knowledge even in the field of management? How, how, how one is able to do this? So they, I, I now just began to administer the university. So I am now able to see what's going on here. I am trying to separate the administrative system of the university to the autonomous centers. So we are creating a little bit uh, deviation, but I don't know. Uh, it will take quite uh, maybe some time for the uh, uh, to principal secretary of higher education to realize what we are doing, and then he's going to slap it anyway. But until that time, we are now trying to create centers of autonomy. Minimum autonomy has to be given to those schools where you require freedom, where you require some special nurturing, and that is also true not only to management, biotechnology, space technology, aerodynamics in such things, or informatics, bioinformatics, high level informatics. We have, we have a lot of people who know how to operate computers and get money in the call, call centers and so on, but we have no real programmers. The real, real cuts of the matter comes, then there is no, uh, I mean ultimately those are the guys who make money, not the guy who pushes the button and works in the night, in Bangalore, Delhi, Gurugram and other places. So this is, this is I, we know that is. And this kind of a system, will have to be broken sooner the better. People at the helm of affairs, those who can make a difference, will have to come out and will have to pressure to start from not only below, from above also. Because it is really suffocating. If somebody wants to do good things, there are more factors stopping him than encouraging him. It's not any design, not any design, but that's the way it is system in our system. That's happening. The other day, two months ago, I was in London and Rome attending the some uh, some of the factory uh, some of the uh, project review committees i found that their the system of review the peer review i was told that peer review system is invented in the orient the peer review makes disinterested reading <laughs> for publication in journal or something that is started in and that is the peer review system in india is now the worst phase worst because quality comes only when there is a review. And the review itself is not quality. You have, it, it's a uh, wrong quality multiplies. So quality, so minus quality square. It goes on every level. Abnormal levels of, uh, of the peer review system. Now these are all contributing to this. And sooner or later, we expect when this enormous number of Young fellows lying on the streets have nothing to do. Something will happen, obvious. 
So the question is, <laughs> people are going to wait that long, or people are going to look at solutions before that happens. And I hope Indian wisdom someday, somewhere will prevail. At least we will go back to look for the inspiration from the ancient wisdom and then see that education is for education purpose. Create the pure knowledge. Rest of the things will solve by itself. Nothing is going to hinder progress. Once we have vetted to the quality and once we are really dedicated to dissemination of this knowledge in an unbiased way, and straight way, straight way. That is the broke that is reflected in all developed nations where education is a, is a, is a premium. Actually, is a premium. Here, charity-based education, yes, that is that's what is happening. That's, that is the one of the major reasons. At the same time, we have to sit, think of our Indian conditions now. How best we move forward to this kind of solutions. And sooner or later, the pressure is mounting. In a university like Usmania, there are, I was told, 110 med uh, business schools. 110 in one university. Now, what do you expect quality? How can you expect quality? So is the case. I mean, sometimes you have only two bedroom house, apartment converted to an MBA school. If this is the case, nobody is there to act. This is what's going to happen. So I think this academy, I don't know the management academy, how, uh, how powerful it is, whether it will be able to dictate terms with the government and come out with a, uh, with the academic auditing of these colleges, something like that. In science, we do have some academies which will at least on paper do something. So we expect that uh, sooner or later this kind of a brainstorming will have to happen more and more places and powerful voices must be built in, built up to take on this lethargy of reforming the education system in this country, more so the business system, business school system in this country. Therefore, I ventured here, although it's not my direct field, I'm, I'm just beginning to see what this is. I ventured a, a, a few lines on my own and got inspired from uh, Swamiji. So I hope um, I have not uh, digressed too much into uh, outside. But I, I feel that if the message is clear, I hope it goes a long way and I wish you all success in your endeavor to look at the challenges, not only in a narrow way, but the challenges in a broader way and then contribute to this discussion which must go on nationwide. Thank you all. The Doyen of uh, Management Education, Professor Pritam Singh. <coughs> To give this address. Uh, Dr. Reddy Garu, my very close friends, Kibanda Padhya, Ravi Kumarji, Bisraji, Bankaj Raman, Mr. Salma, and uh, very great fraternity members of the audience. I can see a very great confluence, and I'm reminded of a very great uh, uh, sloka. We've got three great institutions. For the first time, they moved from the tribalistic mindset to the community mindset, and they have joined together. So I see a great convergence of Ganga it's, it's a very great. Uh, it's a great beginning of that. And there this Roka you must have read Sangha Chatram and some other term. It's a great movement which Venkat uh, you and Sarmaji and uh, Misraji you have started. And I must come to you. Uh, it's another coincidence that we have got Pathisati and we have got Ramachandra. Just a coincidence, but great coincidence. And uh, when I was listening to Swamiji, something came to my mind because uh, before Mahabharata began, Arjuna wanted to see the Virat Rupa. He wanted to see the macro perspective. That's where he said, Kiritam Gadinam, I am Chakrahastam, 
अनेक छावे तो आम दर्शन हम करते ही पर अनके नए वरुण लेने चतुर भजे ना अनसस्त भाव भाव विस्मर I want to see you without you. I want to see things in a very holistic sense. And once I am clear about the holistic sense, I am prepared to fight. Swami Ji saw the Virat Rupa. Virat Rupa in terms of the macro perspective. A very great macro perspective. And I think that which was supplemented beautifully by Dr. Reddy. So Virat Rupa, macro perspective in front of Buddha, Macmillan, really Confucius, Chanakya, all made a very powerful statement. Once you understand the context, you understand the relevance of the direction. If you don't understand the concept, context, you can't understand the relevance of the direction. And that's why I was really extremely agitated, to be honest with you. And uh, the great role of a speaker is to agitate your mind. The moment your mind is agitated, that's where the great odyssey, the great journey, the great renaissance, the great change begins. So I think that. Uh, I will join uh, Dr. Reddy Garu to congratulate for the very exciting and beautiful insight and peace providing a very great land, landscape and open masters. <coughs> Having said that, I would like to say some other things around. Uh, I think that I see the missing return in the education very powerful in this interview education. Ravi is here. I don't see many MBAs joining the PhD program. You go to IIM system, you come to MDI. I, I haven't seen either in Lucknow or Bangalore where I work. And in MDI, the MBAs would be joining PhD program. Even those persons who join PhD program, after doing PhD program, I think very 5%, 10% they join the academic world. The rest of the academic world. So I see a very definitive difference in return. And I think that uh, the root cause, I think Swami has proposed. I remember very well, my first job was in RBI. So when I resigned from RBI, and I came, the person who used to plow my land, he asked a question to my dad that uh, I understand that Bhagyaji has come from uh, Bombay and he has got a job in uh, Varanasi. What job he has got? So my father said, Bhagyaji has become Mudaris. Mudaris means teacher. And the quick reply came from the person who used to plow my land. <laughs> Such a great degeneration of the academic world in the eyes of However, I would also like to say that uh, academic world is also responsible for that kind of degeneration. Rather putting the blame on the country and uh, society, I think academic world has also uh, contribute to the recent Let me try to say something very interesting, and that's why after listening to Shanti, I'm reminded of a very powerful anecdote. It's an anecdote about building a new church. I see a very great dilemma in the society of building a new church. The story of a small European village having a giant sized church 